In this video, we are going to be looking at error messages and display properties uh, of validation controls. Uh, validation controls are meant to show uh, user errors whenever they have not abided by the rules that we have set. Uh, you can configure what the, mes uh, what the message is, uh, the message that you want to display to the user by using the text property of the validation control. So the text property of the validation control, we actually, so if you, the hero is going to be something like, um, uh, please type in a whole number. So you want to put that in the text property of the validation controls. Uh, the text property also accept HTML tags so you can use any HTML tag inside of inside of it to communicate your message to the user. The more important HTML tag you may want to use is the image tag you know if you have uh, an image with maybe a red button that says stop you know something that uh, maybe there's something that is scary so that the user is going to get the attention of your user so they know um, so you can always use any HTML tag you can format it to look uh, exactly the way you want it so you can display an image instead of a text to the user of your web application so maybe I'm going to be trying that as well in the example uh, another important property of validation control is the display property I'm going to demonstrate this which allow you to set three different values uh, you can set the value to be static. When you set the uh, static value, it will produce a result whereby the validation control will use a space on the form. So what that means is, remember, we created two validation forms beside each other, the um, required field, and we put another one beside it, which is the compare validator. So what happens is, say, for example, there's an error on the value. Okay, unless I show you, it might not make sense to you. So let's go on and I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So the the static validation control will take a space on the uh, on the uh, on the page even if there are no errors on it. Whereas the dynamic display property will not use a screen space. The third property none is used to disable the error messages altogether. So sometimes you may want to disable the error message, and I said, hey, why do you want to do that? The reason you may want to do that is because uh, you want to use the validation summary which is a cool way to do it so what you want to do is you can disable each of the validation control error messages so when you disable all the error messages that means that the only the validation summary maybe you place at the bottom or at the bot or at the top of your form now will display all the error messages so the error message is not going to be twice so another useful property of the validation control is the set focus on error which set focus back to the form field where the error has occurred. So let's go ahead now and demonstrate. We have a lot of things to demonstrate the text property, the image tag, and the display property. So, so now let's go to VWD 2008. Uh, so we can uh, actually look at uh, how to put these uh, things to use. So as you can see now that uh, uh, this is still what we had in the last video. So what we want to do now is want to change the errors on the on each of these uh, uh, validation controls. And there are two ways to do that. And um, you have to be careful because this one's the error message, and this is one that we probably want to change. But uh, um, normally you should change the text value on it because if you read the description of the error message, you see it is the message to display in a validation summary when the validator control is invalid but also if you look at the text property it says text to display for the validator when the validated control is invalid so this is more to do this is more to do with the validation summary which we'll be talking about in the uh, in in the future videos so let's set the text to oh please please enter please let's set the text to please enter a name and uh, for the H we want to set it to please enter your H and last one for the pin want to ask them to please enter pin so so if we run the uh, uh, the website now, you will see that uh, when we click on the form, we get a more useful message. Please enter a name, please enter your age, and please enter PIN. So this is better than the 
the error message that we're getting so this is how you want to use it and uh, I was describing the way to use an image instead of uh, um, instead of uh, the text so let's use an image for this one in particular even though I do not have any image on my as you can see this project doesn't have any image so we can import one and the way to do it just like for explain the past is to say add existing item and we can look inside where have I put it I'm sure it's on my desktop it's not it's going to be inside the, my pictures so this is one I used one of the previous video so I've added it so how do you do now is uh, you go to this validation control and you say inside the text you can put an HTML inside the text so where's the text value so we can use IMG then SRC equals then, then the name of the image is uh, link link image dot uh, PNG so let's use then let's see if it works okay so now what we do is we run our website and uh, as you can see the image has been added so if we should get so let's input value here so we want to want to put age to be 29 no 29.5 so we can get an error because we want integer as you can see the image pop out straight away and uh, pin so we do not even have to click on the form to get an error so we get an error immediately because we're using a JavaScript so this is the way you want to do it so now that I want to explain to you what the display property is so as you can see here when I was talking about if you set the display property of a validation control to static even though we do not get an error message from the required field validator because we've actually filled in the value into the age uh, uh, form field because we input it is still taking up a ample space because we want our error to actually be beside the form so what you want to do is you want to set the display property of I, I usually like to set it to um, to dynamic so let's set the let's set the display property of the uh, required feed validator for age to the dynamic so we want to set the display so we're going to D as you can see set to static so let's set it to dynamic and this is going to so let's run the website now so I can demonstrate it to you so if we should get so let's uh, come on there you go 29.5 and uh, as you can see this error message now even though there was a validation control in here it's not taking up any space now so unless there is an error so if there's an error that we didn't enter a value here now you see um, the one of them is working so the other one is not showing because until we enter a value we won't be able to compare it so so that's the way you uh, you, you use it so that's the uh, purpose of the dynamic uh, the display property of the validation control so uh, what else do I want to talk about uh, so I've talked about the HTML tag the text property the display property and uh, the validation summary this is uh, that's going to be in the future video and uh, the set focus on error so okay let's go ahead and uh, set focus on error for this control so we're looking for s so we can set focus on errors to true so if there's an error uh, the the form field we have the so if we click on the button now as you can see that the error is uh, the form is focused as you can see the mouse cursor is actually inside this uh, input field because we set the uh, form uh, set focus on the error to true so that's why this one has the uh, focus on this form now so these are all I want to talk about in this video and in the future video and in the next video I'm going to be talking about more properties of the validation controls thank you